one. One day, two old Sufis were chatting at the door of a mosque. I wonder who might be the greatest Sufi of our time, said one. The other replied that if he knew the answer, he would immediately set off to find the person in order to learn from him. Just at that moment, a worshipper in a green robe came out of the building. Why not go to see Ibrahim bin Azam, he said casually. He went on to direct them to, a, to visit a forest where he said they would find Ibrahim leading a simple life of worship and meditation. Thanking the man, the two Sufis set off on their journey. What a kind man your friend is, said one to the other, and he gave us such careful directions. The other Sufi was astonished to hear this, but I've never met the man before, he said. I thought he was your friend. On comparing notes, they realized that neither of them could remember seeing the man in green inside the mosque or even remembering seeing him enter it. Thanks to the excellent directions they had received, they came quickly, they made they quickly made their way into the forest. Suddenly, they came across a man in a woolen robe sitting under a tree. When they asked him who he was, he, he said, My name is Ibrahim. For a long time, the three Sufis sat and talked. Ibrahim was asked a lot of questions about what it meant to be a good Sufi. They asked about his lonely life in the forest. Where do you sleep and what do you eat, they asked. And Ibrahim told him that he slept under the trees and ate whatever food God provided. When it began to grow dark, Ibrahim invited them to stay and share his dinner. The visitors eagerly accepted. Their curiosity about how he lived would now be satisfied. Brothers, said Ibrahim, pointing out a lake to them. Please go and wash your hands while I get things ready for our meal. The two Sufis went and had a wash. They imagined that Ibrahim must be gathering some leaves and berries for them to eat. Imagine their astonishment to then to find a table in the middle of the forest spread with cloth of the finest quality of which was arranged a magnificent feast. They looked suspiciously at their host. But as the Sufis were feeling very hungry and had never before come across such delicious food, they fell to eating without saying a word. Halfway through their dinner, they began to slow down and asked, and started asking questions again. Thank you, Ibrahim, for such a superb feast. But how did you manage it, living all alone in this wilderness? I have done nothing, replied Ibrahim humbly. All our thanks, thanks are due to God who has provided this dinner today and who provides fruit and berries on other days. I merely call, called on him for help, knowing how tired and hungry we must be. But surely this is wonderful, said the two visited, visitors. God listens to you. What is so wonderful about that, asked Ibrahim. God listens to the chirping of the tiniest cricket, and his worshippers are always close to him. Then Ibrahim is a, this Ibrahim is a very remarkable Sufi, thought his guests. The ability to produce a feast out of thin air was obviously God's reward for his many years of devotion. Tell us, brother, how long have you been a Sufi, they asked. When Ibrahim said that it was only two years ago that he had decided to become a Sufi, they were both surprised and rather annoyed. But I have been a Sufi for twenty years, said one, and yet God has not rewarded me. I have been a Sufi for thirty years, said his companion, equally irritated at this injustice. Then, just then, a newcomer appeared on the scene. He wore a green robe and had a long white beard. At once Ibrahim welcomed the stranger, calling him Kidr, and invited him to share their dinner. The two old Sufis recognized the name for Kidr, the green one, is well known to Muslims and they had heard many stories about how he would unexpect unexpectedly appear to people, usually to rescue them or to help in some way.
They also realized that they too had met Kidder before, for he was the one who had directed him to Ibrahim. Very happy to see him again, they joined, joined Ibrahim in paying him every respect. When they had finished eating, Kidder got up and turned toward the two Sufis. Before I leave, he said, let me answer the question that you were both about to put to Ibrahim. Why is it that God rewards Ibrahim so greatly and you so little when he has given only two years to God and you have given many more? Kidder explained that God did not measure the devotion in length of time, but in how much faith one had. Ibrahim's sacrifice was great indeed. When he gave up his throne, he gave it up completely. He has no regrets and does not even think that it was a sacrifice for him to give up the wealth and power of kingship in exchange for the life of a wandering Sufi. You two, on the other hand, gave up your home comforts but always keep thinking of them and of what a noble sacrifice you have made for God. Ibrahim has never wanted any more, so God delights in fulfilling his slightest wish. But you two have been rewarded for many years with the satisfaction that you feel with your own sacrifice. Even so, God is kind and, and wish to give you a greater reward than you deserve. That is why he guided you today to this forest in order to learn from a true Sufi like Ibrahim bin Aram. The two, the three men bowed together, the green one as he vanished from their sight. The end.